I'm an infectious disease doctor, and, and, and I really got into the world of, H, of facial fillers through my work with HIV patients. I started practicing in Vero Beach in 1990. I left New York City during the kind of the upsurge of the AIDS epidemic, and when I came to Vero Beach, I kind of made the decision that, okay, I'm not going to be doing uh, academic infectious disease working in the HIV clinic. I'm going to come to a small town in Florida. But it turned out that because of my infectious disease background, I became a magnet for patients with HIV from up and down the Treasure Coast. And really, I would say for the first 15 years of my practice, I was doing uh, HIV primary care, seeing patients in the hospital with infectious disease problems. And, and I really got into doing facial fillers through a very different pathway than I would have ever expected. And this pathway is lipoatrophy. Um, in 1994, 1995, there was a, a huge breakthrough in treatment of HIV infection. Up until that time, people were dying within two years. And when triple therapy came out, we started seeing, it, it was kind of like being around when penicillin was inve invented or, or discovered. That's the only analogy I can use because we went from seeing patients that were sick all the time in the hospital to recovering, rec getting their lives back, going back into, into real life. We talk about the Lazarus syndrome. But around with a year or two of that, though, we started seeing patients coming in with mid-facial volume loss. They were, they were getting better. Their numbers were getting better, but they were looking older. They were losing fat. And we didn't realize what was going on in the beginning, but we eventually realized this was actually a complication of the medications we were using to treat HIV. They were preferentially attacking the fat cells of the face, a medical condition called facial lipoatrophy. So, so getting back in 2005, um, when Sculpture got approved, I couldn't, you know, again, this was many years ago, I couldn't get any of the dermatologists or plastic surgeons locally to treat my patients, not because they wouldn't have, but the only way they could get the treatments was through patient access programs, which was a real hassle. So the doctor in Miami that did the studies, I called him, I said, I can't get anybody to treat my patients, and he said, come on down, I'll teach you how to do Sculpture. We all need spouses to keep, to keep us honest. Anyway, but I did go and uh, learn how to do sculpture, then got involved doing uh, facial fillers using radius and sculpture. And I would say really for the first three years or so, I was just treating HIV patients with the combination of radius and sculpture. But then I started getting requests from family and friends. You know, Joe looks good. Can you treat me? And so then I branched out into the world of, of non-HIV. But again, by that time, I'd already done well over 1,000 cases, had learned how to do fillers, so I'd gone through my learning curve at that point in time.